Hello everybody, welcome to another video. As you can see, I am not in Shanghai. So we made the attempt to uh, go out of the town and we encountered some problems. The local authorities uh, were not at all happy to have us out and um, well, we, we didn't leave. We weren't allowed to leave. <clears throat> Here's a little clip that I've got from uh, a neighbor who also tried to go out into town um, let me go ahead and show you that. You死了！你不要！我不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！你不要！
because those people aren't even being allowed to go outside without being harassed, as you saw in the little video clip. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. I was looking forward to going and doing some traveling with my son. He does love to go out and see places. You can see his disappointment here. Oh, man. Oh, man. How could you do that? Really? You're gonna roll it? Oh, man. I can't believe that. Oh, man. Really? I think he's getting a little bit tired of being at the house. <laughs> but I don't want to take him out too much. I mean, I've gone out in the front yard with him a bit and played a little bit, uh, but I think he's probably getting pretty bored out here. Back at home, he was able to go and play on a playground, you know, and there's parks and that sort of thing. And I'm sure if he was able to just run wild out here that he'd probably love it, but... Well, I can't really do that at this point. Not a good idea. I don't know who's sick. He uh, doesn't exactly like to wear a mask. Which reminds me of that, that stupid cat thing with the mask. You know, the cat seemed to wear it okay, but I know my son won't. He might wear it if he sees, you know, his dad's wearing it or something. He might be willing to wear it for a little bit. But I don't think it would last very long before he just took it off. So, yeah, that's kind of tough. A two-year-old trying to get a two-year-old to wear a mask. Not very easy. Not very easy to get a two-year-old to do anything. <laughs> he, if he wants to do it, he'll do it. But if he doesn't, then, well, then it's a problem. Yeah, which reminds me, the last time I took him out into the front yard to play, he decided it was a good idea to pick up a rock off the driveway and throw it on the car. <laughs> right in front of my wife. She's the one that worries the most about the car getting scratched. And then there he goes. <laughs> Throws it right on the car and gets himself into some trouble. <clears throat> he knew we don't like him to throw the things in the car, but, you know, he's a, he's a two-year-old, so what can you do? Sometimes he does it on purpose, like I say, just because he knows he's not supposed to. He'll do something, and then he'll run away laughing like it's so great to see Mom and Dad panic to try and stop him. But, well, that's my son for you. <laughs> It's really interesting for me to see all of this happening with these, uh, the town governments just completely disregarding what the central government says. I think that they're aware of the economic damage that is happening, and of course they're telling people not to block the roads and to let people through and don't restrict people from entering or exiting the freeways. And then the local governments just turn around and continue to do, well, what they're doing now, you know, it's just... The exact opposite. They're blocking the, the roads. They're, they're not letting people exit the freeways in different places. As we mentioned with Shanghai, where they put their, their own restriction of not allowing people into the city that, uh, that don't live there. Which I have to say is most of the workforce. So all of these factories, and this is a real problem in other places. I think Foxconn right now is experiencing some serious problems with that. Most of their workforce... It's, it's from somewhere else. They're not from Guangdong. So, you know, they're not allowed into these cities. And, uh, well, guess what? That means that only 10% of the workforce shows up when they open up to supposedly start making their iPhone parts. And, well, that's a disaster. So, I don't know what's going to happen for Apple. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if things are going to get more expensive or just there won't be any iPhones available suddenly. But uh, it's looking pretty bad. Um, I, I like I said, I don't know what they're going to do. In fact, most of the world's electronics are manufactured there in uh, Guangdong province, which is being heavily affected by the virus. There's a lot of people with the virus out there. So I, uh, I really don't know what is going to happen. And as you can see, I've managed to find this old quarry here. I've been here once, quite a while ago. They had a brick factory in this town or actually, it's here in the village, just up the street uh, from where we're at. There used to be a brick factory. Up until maybe last year sometime, I think something happened where the uh, the owner of the factory had somehow offended the local town government person. And I have no idea exactly how it happened, but... In either, either case, the place was shut down and they tore down the giant chimney stack and, well, they don't make bricks over there anymore. So, 
I'm assuming that's this uh, quarry was part of that. They uh, must have gotten material from here. Not anymore. Now it's just full of water and there is a bunch of trash around. You can't see the trash, but somebody dumped a bunch of trash in here. It's not really a ton of trash, but certainly somebody has put some trash in here. And next to it is some kind of reservoir. I'm assuming that uh, they use this for the fields to irrigate and all of that. It's definitely not good drinking water. But yeah, and you can see all these uh, farm things. They uh, attach electric pumps to it and they, uh, like I said, they use the water to irrigate the fields and to fill up the, uh, the rice paddies. At least they will be when uh, when spring really starts to hit. There'll be a lot of water and that'll mean a lot of mosquitoes and every other kind of bug that you can think of makes for an unpleasant walks when that when that time comes. It's already starting to warm up a little bit, but I've just been told that there's a giant storm of rain and snow that's on its way. I'm really not looking forward to that. Uh, I'm tired of rain and snow and that sort of thing. I'm ready for spring. I'm also very ready for this virus to be over. But, well, I don't know when that's going to happen, so we'll see. So, when everything finally is over, then I can begin making videos show off, showing, uh, not showing off. Obviously, I haven't got much to show off here. <laughs> My camera skills are... I I can I think I do okay with a regular camera, but video obviously is not my uh, my strong suit. But well, maybe you'll find it entertaining at the very least. So when things go back to normal, then I can start to go around and maybe show off some of the places that I've been here in China and yeah, see if you like it or you find it interesting. Maybe you'll want to make a trip out here and have a look yourself. Try some interesting new foods. Um, I like to think that I understand. Uh, the western palette a little bit so maybe i can help you to uh, navigate some of the pitfalls that people often find themselves in when trying chinese cuisine i think the biggest thing is textures i probably mentioned that in another video but yeah textures are a, a thing they, they seem to like slimy things not always like i said i can help you to find some of the things that will be a little more familiar but still different enough that you can say hey I went to China and I tried authentic Chinese food and it was delicious. Nothing like what they have in the Chinese restaurant. But then you might, uh, if you stay too long, you might start to miss your General Tso's chicken and your uh, broccoli beef or whatever it is that people eat these days, egg rolls. I miss it. I certainly miss it. But uh, you can try something different, like hot pot. In Chinese, it's called huo guo. And of course, stinky tofu. You gotta try stinky tofu. The taste is far better than the smell. And if anybody ever offers to take you to Chinese barbecue, definitely give that a try. That's amazing stuff. I love going for Chinese barbecue. But, as we know, you'll probably want to avoid the bat soup. Now, I... Personally, I've never actually seen anybody eating bat soup or any of those weird things that people talk about. But I guess people do. And now they're saying maybe the virus came from bats. I don't know. If it really did come from that uh, market, then I guess that's a possibility that it came from bats. But don't eat bat soup. And when you hear stories about people eating dog, well, it's not a racist thing. People do eat dog in Asia. In fact, um, I encountered, uh, while I was walking around one day in Danyang, where I normally live, I encountered a, a restaurant that serves dog meat. You can see it here. Yep, look at the picture all the way to the right. That's dog meat. I remember seeing the sign on the, or the pictures on the, the glass, and, you know, I saw the picture of the dog. Uh, it didn't really click right away, like... You know, there's the lamb, and it's showing the lamb meat, you know, and there's a cow or whatever, and a chicken, and it's showing the different dishes. And then there's some dogs on there. But, you know, you never think, like, oh, dog meat. But <laughs> then you look below it, and sure enough, there's, you know, a thing with some food on it, and you start to put two and two together, and you're like, wait a minute. It's a dog meat restaurant. It really is. 
Oh my gosh, I thought only truck drivers ate that. And no offense to truck drivers, by the way. I mean, uh, the Chinese truck drivers. They have been known to like dog meat. Um, I don't know why, but uh, sometimes if you're ever traveling around around truck stops on out-of-the-way places, you'll find a dog meat restaurant. But I was surprised to see one in the city. And yeah, they do. And it's not just a Chinese thing. It's... Uh, now, I'm not saying you're going to go to Japan or something and they're going to have dog meat, but I do believe uh, I had an old boss that lived in the Philippines and he said that they eat dog. I, I guess in different parts of Asia they do. In fact, you know, that reminds me of something. There's an old movie, an old Chinese movie with Jet Li. Yeah, it's when he was much younger. I don't think this one is something that they have a lot in the West, but for some reason he was... Uh, I, I don't know what was going on. It was hard to follow. But there was a dog, and he was trying to hide from some girl. And he tried to keep the dog quiet, and somehow it suffocated it. And then the next thing I knew, like the next scene, he's roasting the dog and eating it. It was a, a bit of a shock, you know. There's a movie star that everybody knows, and he's in a movie eating a dog. So, yeah, they do eat dogs. I think that more recently they've been trying to uh, to get rid of that because obviously it looks bad and sounds bad that Chinese people eat dogs. So they've been kind of cracking down on that. It's not a really common thing. It's not like you're going to come to China and you have to worry that the restaurant's going to be serving dog. That's probably not going to happen to you, especially in tourist places or Shanghai. Definitely, I don't think you're never going to find dog meat in Shanghai or somewhere like that. It's very hard to find. So... Don't worry, don't worry too much. When you come to China, you're not going to get fed dog. Although I did once, and I didn't know it for a long time after. And Anyway, never mind. I, what am I saying? Don't worry about it. You're not going to eat dog, uh, although there are people that do eat dog. Now, I have heard some things uh, just as an update as far as the virus situation. It sounds to me like the Chinese government wants to uh, have more dialogue with the outside world to talk about what's happening with the virus. Um, that's what I keep hearing, anyway. That, uh, well, they're trying to get this thing under control. Obviously, they're throwing everything they've got at it, but, uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to know what's going on, you know. I can hear the Chinese news, and then I hear all these videos from uh, YouTube and the rest of the world. And I, I mean, I've I've learned not to just trust everything I see online, but you know, it really, uh, it's really strange. It's hard to know what exactly is going on here and what's real and what's not, but well, it's a little scary. I guess it's nice that we're here in this place instead of in the, in the middle of the city being welded into our apartment. Um, this is a nice little pocket of, I guess, uh, I don't know what you'd call it a pocket of, but a pocket of not virus stuff. <laughs> so I'm I'm really lucky to be able to have all this space to walk around in. I, I should be pretty grateful of having made the decision to come here, even though now we're stuck. But uh, at least we're not in the city where people are, like I said, being welded into their apartments. That's uh, that's a pretty scary thought. Because no matter how much they throw at this, I cannot imagine that they have the resources on top of everything else to be able to, you know, get food to all these people who are now stuck in their apartments. So, I, uh, I, I, just, I don't even know what to say to that. It seems like a really, really stupid move on the part of the very, very local level authorities in that situation. Of course, what do I know? You know, maybe they're afraid they're going to turn into zombies and come out and attack everybody. Maybe we should be preparing for that. Maybe that's why they've got that earth embankment. But, of course, the zombies will just go around it, so a lot of good that'll do. I mean, if things really got bad, I can be really glad that I'm not next to a large city because I can just imagine all the people coming out of there, you know, oh, they've got food in the countryside. And then, you know, you get massive crowds of people coming out to take all the food. That's uh, not probably going to happen, but, you know, it's a scary thought. But as I said, you can see that we're nowhere near a large city. 
So we should be fine if if the world really comes down to that, then uh, everything should be fine. Hopefully the government gets uh, control of things here before too long. Because like I said, the uh, the locals are certainly not listening to what the central government is saying, and they're just doing whatever they, they feel like they should do. Which I guess is lock everyone in their houses and harass them and threaten them if they come outside. In the town. Out here, like I said, we're... We're kind of on our own, so that's nice. We can actually move around and be in the sunshine if uh, if it happens to be sunny. I also wanted to update you guys on uh, Grandma and Grandpa's condition. So Grandpa's doing a lot better now. He's able to eat and drink, and he's uh, he's got a lot more energy. He's not out chopping wood or anything, but uh, he's he's doing a lot better. Yesterday he went for a walk. It's good to see that he's, you know, got enough energy to go and do that. Walk up the street to the old village and back. So he's doing a lot better. I'm glad that they had something to help them in the town. And I'm glad that those people didn't stop them from going. I'm sure they got harassed a bit, but, well, I'm just glad that he was able to get help. I don't know what's happening to the people in other places where they're not allowed to go out, but I don't know. And that's probably about all I've got for this video. I, I imagine it's going to be pretty boring here for the next little while until uh, they ease up their controls on the roads and we can actually go back to, uh, to where we normally live. But I'll continue to update you guys on things that I hear. Um, hopefully I'll have more news than what I have now besides the fact that we can't go anywhere. And hopefully it'll be good news. So until then, I guess we'll see you in the next one.